find what works best for you without like breaking the rules too much. Like don't be a fucking maniac. Does this make any sense? <laughs> People come up to me at conventions and shit be like, oh Harlan, I followed you for so long and you're an inspiration and like, what machine are you using? What needles are you using? What ink are you using? The question should not be what, the question should be why. Everybody tattoos differently. You gotta find what works for you. I run my, sh my machine pretty high. Right now it's on an eight. I have friends that run it on five and a half to do the same thing I'm doing because their hand movement is slower and they kind of just like want to build it up a little bit more. It's more about like, why do you use that instead of what are you using? I mean, this is a large tattoo, so I knew we weren't gonna get it finished. Our goal last time was to get through all the lines, which was a mind melter. So if we look at all the individual lines that are in the mushrooms and in through the face and all the little details, if there was any time left, we would try to get through the black, which is what ended up happening. Like, she sits good, I've done a bunch of tattoos on her, and so we did the lines, and then we did as much black as time and pain threshold allowed. It's the other thing, too, it's like, I'm not trying to absolutely murder my client so I can get a good picture for Instagram. You know, what are our motives? Should I always try to give the client as much as I can? 100%. The mashups can get a little complicated. Like if I'm doing like a split face with a realistic portrait with like a flower in the middle, like a Neo Trad flower, right? That first day, I really focus on getting the lines in and getting the portrait done. If the client's doing okay and they want to keep rolling and we can do the color, that's cool. But usually their split faces are done pretty large, so they usually take a couple sessions. I want to get the lines in so I don't have to re-stencil it exactly. The portrait I want to get done too so I don't have to either gray line it all or go back in and, and replace a sense it's just like making my job easier if i'm doing like a big neo trad piece it's pretty easy i can just break it down into like lines black and shading color i try to make the second session as easy on myself as well as the client as it can be so get the majority of it done the first time the lines and the and the portrait and then the second time we can just pack some color the needle variations depend on what style i'm doing my go-to for like black and gray realism is like a bug pin 17 curve mag. I use the quartz from Peak Needles for that. It usually hits a little bit softer so I can like layer the gray wash and kind of build it up to give it that soft saturated look that you see like my portraits have. Maybe like a bug pin five round shader or a seven round shader for little details and skulls and little details like uh, in the nostril or the eyelashes. As a tattooer, you want to be able to like use the right tool for the job. What am I going to do? Line something with a 17 mag? You got to be a little versatile. It's like a, a carpenter. He's got to know what tools he's using for which job. It's the same thing with tattooing. This is a craft. I need to understand what I'm doing with multiple needle groupings so I can use them to the best of my ability and what they're supposed to be used for. I'm not gonna try to fucking color in a huge area with a fucking three liner. I know a guy that does that and he's kind of mastered that, but like, it's not what I'm recommending to do. We have tools at our disposal, let's use them. With Neotrad stuff, my liners, it kind of depends how big the piece is, but I usually like to go with like a Trad 9 as like the focus of the piece, the foreground stuff. Example, in this piece, there's like a seven round liner, tight seven liner, there's some bold stuff, and then like the, the lines inside, most of the stuff is a smaller liner. And again, you gotta know what the fuck you're doing with Neotrad too, because it's like, is every single line gonna be black? No. I got a bunch of gray lines in here because I want those to be softer. Gray lines all through here and here and here and in the teeth. I don't want to black line those. But I think a pro tip and trick is like people who want to learn stuff, find those people that you look up to and ask them why instead of what. Why do you use that four millimeter stroke flux max? How does that work better for you than a smaller stroke machine or a coil? That's what will benefit people trying to learn the most. If I tell you to tattoo a certain way and you're like, oh, okay, and you do it and you just like fuck some shit up because that's not how you tattoo or not what's comfortable for you. Don't try to tattoo like somebody else. Find what works best for you and and apply that and learn how to continue to advance with that. Find other people that do tattoo like that. If somebody tattoos similar to me, we can like discuss how we do things, why we do things a certain way. Because here's the thing, if you can't tattoo and you ask me what machine I'm using or what needles I'm using, what ink I'm using, and then you buy that stuff because you think you're gonna tattoo like me then, you ain't gonna. I thought the same thing when I just started tattooing, watching like Nico Hurtado fucking tattoo, and I'm like, what machine is he using? What fucking needles is he using? That's what I need to do, but it's like, no. That's not what I needed to do. I needed to learn how to fucking tattoo. I learned how to fucking line pro properly, how to whip shade properly, how to pack color. There's no fucking secret to what I'm doing.